Hello and welcome back to the Umbrella Academy. I am Mir Niaz. In this lecture we will discuss how nonpolar halogen molecule acts as electrophile. Mechanism of halogenation. Regiochemistry of halogenation is not relevant. Stereochemistry of halogenation. Stereospecificity, for example halogenation of cis and trans 2 butane give different products. Halogenation involves the addition of X2, either Br2 or Cl2, across an alkene. As an example, consider the chlorination of ethylene to produce dichloroethane. This reaction is a key step in the industrial preparation of polyvinyl chloride PVC. Halogenation of alkenes is only practical for the addition of chlorine or bromine. The reaction with fluorine is too violent, and the reaction with iodine often produces very low yields. Molecular bromine is a nonpolar compound because the Br-Br bond is covalent. Yet, the molecule is polarizable, and therefore, approach of a nucleophile can cause a temporary, induced dipole moment in bromine. This effect places a partial positive charge on one of the bromine atoms, rendering the molecule electrophilic. Many nucleophiles are known to react with bromine. We have seen that pi bonds are nucleophilic, and therefore, it is reasonable to expect an alkene to attack bromine as well, like this, with bromine attaching on one side and creating a carbocation on other carbon. Although this step seems plausible, there is a fatal flaw in this proposal. If a free carbocation were produced in this process, then both syn and anti-addition would be expected on this planar carbocation, because the carbocation could be attacked from either side. Thus a racemic mixture should be formed. But in reality halogenation gives products of anti-addition only. And therefore, this mechanism does not account for the observed anti-stereospecificity of halogenation. The actual mechanism goes via bridged intermediate and not through a free carbocation. The alkene functions as a nucleophile and attacks molecular bromine, expelling bromide as a leaving group and forming a bridged intermediate called a bromonium ion. This bridged intermediate is similar in structure and reactivity to the mercurinium ion discussed in oxymercuration demercuration lecture. Unlike a normal carbocation, all the atoms in a halonium ion have filled octets. The three-membered ring has considerable ring strain which, combined with a positive charge on an electronegative halogen atom, makes the halonium ion strongly electrophilic. Attack by a nucleophile, such as a halide ion, opens the halonium ion to give a stable product. In the second step of the proposed mechanism, the bromonium ion is attacked by the bromide ion that was produced in the first step. This step is an SN2 process and must therefore proceed via a backside attack. The requirement for backside attack explains the observed stereochemical requirement for anti-addition. Since bromonium ion is susceptible to attack by nucleophile, therefore, any solvents used must be inert to the halogens, for impel methylene chloride, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride are the most frequent choices. The addition of bromine has been used as a simple chemical test for the presence of olefinic double bonds. A solution of bromine in carbon tetrachloride is a clear, deep red color. When this red solution is added to an alkene, the red bromine color disappears, we say it is decolorized, and the solution becomes clear and colorless. Although there are other functional groups that decolorize bromine, few do it as quickly as alkenes. Let us try our understanding by writing products of these reactions. 
The first step is attack of alkene on bromine molecule to form bromonium ion. This can occur from top side or bottom side. When bromonium ion is formed on top side, the methyl group is pushed towards the bottom side. Likewise, methyl is pushed on top side when bromonium ion is formed on bottom side. Second step is opening of bromonium ion on more substituted carbon by nucleophile bromide anion. When this bromide anion approaches, this more substituted carbon from bottom side, to open the three-membered ring on top side, the methyl group is pushed above the plane to give this enantiomer. Likewise in this case, methyl is pushed below the plane because the bromide anion has to attack this bridged intermediate from top side to give this enantiomer. Same way in this second example, three-membered bromonium ion will be formed on top and bottom side, so that methyl groups are pushed in the opposite side. Since the two carbons are equally substituted, these will be opened by bromide nucleophile on any of the two carbons from opposite side, so that the stereochemistry of methyl group on the carbon being attacked is reversed. The end result is the formation of enantiomers with anti-stereochemistry of bromines. Halogen addition is another example of a stereospecific reaction in which different stereoisomers of the starting material give different stereoisomers of the product. For example, cis-2-butene will yield different products than trans-2-butene. Anti-addition across cis-2-butene leads to a pair of enantiomers, while anti-addition across trans-2-butene leads to a meso compound. These examples illustrate that the configuration of the starting alkene determines the configuration of the product for halogenation reactions. Let us work out how this happens. Take cis-2-butene. The bromonium ion can be formed on top as well as bottom face of alkene. This will be opened by bromide anion from backside to give this product, in which added bromine atoms are anti to each other. Same will be the case in this one, so that enantiomer is formed. Let us write the Fischer projections of these to make this more clear. Looking through this C2C3 bond, we can convert this into Fischer projection. We can show the hydrogens on C2 and C3. Of course, these will have stereochemistry opposite to bromines. C2C3 will be drawn as vertical line in Fischer projection. Bromine on C2 is on right and hydrogen is on left. On C3, bromine is on left and hydrogen on right. The methyl groups on C2 and C3 are both down. Same can be done in this case. Bromine on C2 is on left and hydrogen on right. On C3, bromine is on right and hydrogen on left. Of course, the methyl groups on C2 and C3 are both down, as in previous enantiomer. We can write Fischer projection like this. C2, C3 and methyl carbons will be on vertical line and bromine and hydrogens will be on horizontal lines. Therefore, we get these structures as Fischer projections. Comparing these two Fischer projections, we can clearly see these are mirror images, that is, these are enantiomers. Consider the bromination of this trans isomer. Let us form bromonium ion on top, as well as bottom face. Now open these bromonium ions with bromide anion from opposite face. In this case, bromide attacks from bottom face to open the three-membered ring on top face. Whereas in this case, 
bromide anion attacks from top face to open three-membered ring on bottom face. After opening, the dibromides are obtained as products in which bromines on C2-C3 are anti to each other because second step is SN2 backside attack. Don't be mistaken to think of these as different enantiomers. They are actually same. We know that Fischer projections are eclipsed conformations, therefore, the methyl groups must be on same side when converting these to Fischer projections. For this, C2-C3 bond must be rotated 180 degrees. In doing so, bromines on C2-C3 come on same side. We can write the hydrogens opposite to bromines just like we did before in case of cis isomer. Now, looking through C2-C3 bond, we can write the Fischer projections. In this case, on both C2-C3, we can see the bromines on right of the observer and hydrogens on left, whereas in other case, hydrogens are on right side on both C2-C3 and bromines on left side. These might appear as mirror images to you, but if we carefully look into these, we find that these have a mirror plane of symmetry. That means we get a meso compound, whether the bromonium ion is formed on top or bottom face of trans 2 butene. Thus, different products are obtained from different starting material. Thus, halogenation of alkenes is a stereospecific reaction.